Sports fans need to know his name. Sports radio consumers better get on this brand. It is Ryan Bellick. We're going to have a lot of fun talking about his backstory. He is a senior producer, Sirius XM Channel 84, currently working with Dusty and Danny in the morning, Dusty Dvorak and Danny Cannell, weekday 7 to 10 a.m. Eastern, Sirius XM 84. They talk everything college athletics, and it's going to be a fun thing here and highlighting Ryan's story, where he got to today, what makes him inspirational. And this is the Onto Something podcast. I'm Brian Fenley, a national anchor at Fox Sports Radio. You can follow Ryan, of course, on Twitter at Ryan Valick. I'm on Twitter at Brian Fenley. Ryan, really excited to do this. Been following your career and all that you've been doing and your career rise. And I saw over the summer you went to the Grand Teton, do one on this 30 mile bike ride. And it was quite the adventure. How would you in any way compare the adventure of a bike ride in the Grand Tetons to the adventure of a career that you've had so far in radio? Ah, uh, well, I don't know how much those would necessarily <laughs> relate. Uh, I am not one who goes on bike rides a lot. Uh, my dad is a Peloton monster now. He got it for Hanukkah or his birthday or something, you know, three years ago. And it's just turned into a beast, lost a lot of weight. And so him and my brother's in pretty good shape. You know, me, I, I watch the sports, not as much as, as uh, play them uh, nearly as much anymore, but we went on this huge bike ride. It was great. You know, it was beautiful, but we had the option of getting an e-bike beforehand and I had never done an e-bike before. And then we get to, and I was like all excited for it. I thought it'd be a great idea. And we get to the rental store and the guy is like, you know, it's an extra 60 bucks and me, I'm just always I don't know why I'm just, you know, it's not even my money. It was like my parents paying for everything, but I was just like, you know what? I'm going to man up. I'm going to just ride the bike. It's not going to be that hard, (laughs) whatever. Oh man. About like mile seven, we go on like an uphill incline and I was grinding and it was very tough. I almost, you know, wanted to turn around, but it was fine. We ended up making it, you know, the Grand Tetons. I don't know if you've ever been, but Jackson Hole, the whole area is pretty spectacular. Um, So yeah, it was, you know, it was worth it in the end. Um, but comparing that to my radio career or just my career in general, you know, I guess it has been a grind. Um, you know, started off as an unpaid intern um, for a couple of years when I was in college at WFNZ in Charlotte. And, you know, it's great at the time. You know, the experience is amazing. Um, I loved it. You know, made me fall in love with what I was doing. Um, but it took a while to get to where I really wanted to be and where I am now and at a much more comfortable position in my life financially and um yeah it's so it's it's all been worth it and you know where i am right now with sirius xm has been it's unbelievable so yeah we're going to talk i want to talk about that obviously and ryan balk is with us i'm brian fenley so to to go back to the metaphor of riding a bike you pointed out you know at times there were the the steep inclines and that's where it really gets challenging as you're trying to pedal up a mountain how have you been pleased so far i don't know if satisfied is the right word but proud in yourself And how a moment in your career when there really was a steep incline and you were able to pedal and get to the top and then see just what you were able to overcome. So when I first got into radio, um, you know, when I was first looking for like a real full time job, it was kind of like a harsh reality check. Um, I was a business major in college and I did a TV show in school called one-on-one sports uh, television, which was like, it was amazing. We had like our own, our own student run part of the interruption show that I would do every week. And I kind of got thrusted into it when I was a freshman and just wrote it out my entire four years. I ended up being the women's basketball announcer for Elon. So like, I really got into it, you know, I was loving what I was doing and I wanted to make a career out of it. I like, I wouldn't say I stopped paying attention in business classes, but I just didn't, I just knew that that wasn't going to be what I was doing, at least immediately out of college. Like I wanted to be in sports radio specifically. And so when you're applying for jobs, you know, it's so hard. Uh, There's like thousands of jobs. You don't really know what the right opportunity is for you. I mean, you're just looking for like when I was an intern, you just wanted to be part of a show and you wanted to know what show you're working. You wanted to know what hours you're working. And it's hard. Uh, Radio is not kind on, you know, normal schedules or normal lives. And so it took a while. Um, I probably ended up getting hired probably like eight months after um, I graduated. I went to Europe after I graduated for 30 days with me and my, my three best friends. And wow. we just went to 17 different cities in 30 days and spent all of our money and just tore it up. It was like it tripped my lifetime. I, I remember one specific story from every city and like me and my friends talk about it all the time. It's just so much fun. 
And so I got home. I didn't have a job, obviously. You know, I didn't really have anything lined up. And I taught at the uh, Jewish Community Center. I was doing some tennis classes just to make some money when I was still living at home. Um, And then I took a business job. It was like a sales job. And it was at a third party logistics company. And, you know, sales, like my mom has always told me I'd be good at sales because, you know, I do radio and I can talk to people about whatever. I'm just, I don't know, I'm comfortable doing those kinds of things and talking about literally nothing, which is perfect for sports radio. <laughs> uh, um, and so it was like one of the first couple of weeks, I only ended up working at this company for three months. And it was one of the first couple of weeks we used to do our sales calls with other people that I was working with. And I was just talking to this one guy, you know, about, I don't even know. And this guy just looks at me that I work with. He's like, man, you should be on the radio. And I was like, "Mm, I know what I should be doing. Um, And so that was kind of like a nice kick in the butt that really, you know, was like, all right, I'm gonna do anything I can to make this happen. And I moved up from Charlotte, North Carolina to Washington, D.C. for a part-time gig with the NASCAR channel. And I had never watched a full NASCAR race in my life, despite being from Charlotte, North Carolina, which is the background of, or the backyard of NASCAR. And I moved up. I had a best friend from camp that lived in Potomac, Maryland. I lived in his basement. I was like the family's dog for, you know, four to five months. And then me and him eventually moved out and we got our own place. I was still part-time at that moment. I worked at a restaurant, which was a a adventure. Um, And then eventually I got uh, full-time with NASCAR as an associate producer. And then I worked my way up and yeah. So that was probably the big moment was, you know, when I was working at that logistics company doing sales calls and the guy was like, man, you should be doing radio. And I was like, mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we need those outside influences to really get us to concentrate on our goals and realize, Hey, we got to, we got one life here. We got to go for it. And you certainly have, we're joined by Ryan Ballack. I'm Brian Fenley. So when you were working in that environment at Sirius XM, as you mentioned, Ryan, you started out part time and worked your way up. What was it early on that allowed you to thrive in that environment and got you to get to full time and for other people, your peers around you to say, hey, this guy's got some serious future in front of him. We, we got to bring him on full time and we've got to add him and make him a bigger part of the lineup. Well, I wanted to, you know, I didn't want to, whenever I've, I've, I've worked with like four new shows and, you know, these shows have been going on for years, you know, Sirius XM isn't like some brand new kind of thing. And so my mentality, when I go in there for the first, you know, month or two is just don't screw it up, you know, <laughs> just make it keep going the way, make the host feel like there's not, there hasn't been a replacement, like just make everything run as smoothly as possible, make the hosts as comfortable as they want to be. And I was lucky enough to work with some really awesome people. One, actually two with NASCAR, who I've been with the entire time now, uh, Chris Turlop, who is the um, executive producer for ESPNU. Uh, Me and him were, he was my producer when I was an associate producer when I first started. So we got, you know, he was great, you know, and it all, I think it really does depend on the type of person you get to work with. I then worked with another guy, Don DeFruccio, when I moved to a different show. He's the executive producer for NASCAR now. It's just, I've worked with very good people. And Sirius XM does breed some very talented, smart, creative people. Um, And I listen to a lot of radio. Um, I've just kind of found out what works, what people like to listen to, what people don't like to listen to, you know, how to keep things fresh and I feel like that's really helped me along the way as well. As far as keeping things fresh with what you do now with Dusty Dvorak and Danny Cannell, they have some great personalities, both of them. And oh, you yeah. compliment that as well as being part of the show, which I encourage everybody to check out weekday, 7 to 10 a.m. Eastern, Sirius XM, of course, Channel 80 for ESPNU channel. So having yourself being a part of that really interesting dynamic with Dusty and Danny how do they work together so well to make radio gold? They both have a ton of energy and they both are just have a ton of fun with it. You know, it's people who don't take themselves super seriously, which is great. And um, people, both of them have amazing experience. That is what's really great. You know, I love hearing people's stories. You know, I don't like people necessarily hearing, you know, the 80 year old man tell his stories about you know, <laughs> back, back in the day, you yeah. know, they wouldn't play defense, but Dusty and Danny have really, you know, really cool experience. You know, Dusty is really tight with Brian Urlacher and, you know, Danny Cannell is like a, you know, quarterback star. It's just 
for me, it's still cool. Like I still get starstruck, you know, just working with these guys, even though if they are not, you know, they weren't some superstar NFL players, but for me, they're, they're kind of media person, you know, superstars, which I think is really cool. Uh, but the two of them, you know, I've only been doing the show for a few months and they are awesome. You know, they're fully bought in, which, you know, and that, you've worked in radio for a long time. And, you know, there's some people, unfortunately in our industry that get pretty comfortable uh, doing what they're doing. And they just, you know, it'll be a show where you just sit and take calls the entire time, which just gets boring and stale. And you want to just have fun and keep it new for, for viewers, as opposed to just playing old clips that make you laugh all the time. You know, you just got to keep it fresh with new segments and Dusty and Danny have been really bought in with, you know, trying to book celebrity guests and trying to come up with new fun segments just based on like popular culture, or they've been very accepting in my, you know, silly game ideas that I have. And I have, a lot of those, I like to just kind of swing and miss with those, but you know, it's just, they're, they're fun. They're open to it. And um, yeah, it's been great so far. What is a game that you did not swing and miss on that you connected on a fastball down the middle and it worked out on the air? Mm, um, well, this is a, <laughs> so actually recently we, we, we did a really fun one. Um, I was thinking my big 12 show, I could tell you about that. Yeah. Um, but we did, you watched uh, Ted Lasso. You know what? Everybody, this is, I'm embarrassed to admit, everybody says, Brian, you've got to watch it. So I actually haven't started it yet, but it is definitely coming up in my viewing and I have to see it. So, but I know the general understanding of the story behind it. Yeah. He's just like a really positive dude. Yeah. You know, not, you know, he just has very funny quotes and stuff like that. And Matt Campbell, the coach for Iowa State football also is unbelievably optimistic. Like you have never heard a man more optimistic, more coach speak, like, you know, make you want to run through a wall. It's great. And so we played like Ted Lasso or Matt Campbell and it was great. You know, I had, you know, random hosts from ESPN radio, like texting my guy saying that was a great segment. It was, so that's fun when you get that kind of stuff. And then on my other show, big 12 uh, this morning that I did for uh, the previous three years before I was with Dusty and Danny, we had a segment, the final like few months I was there called Ryan's ridiculous take of the day, where I literally would just rant about whatever (laughs) the guys really thought it was funny. So it was good. And I, you know, had a couple of ridiculous takes that nailed it. Like I said, at the beginning of the season that the Clemson dynasty is going down the toilet. Now that Trevor Lawrence and Deshaun Watson aren't there and that's looking pretty good. So we'll, we'll see. That's looking pretty good. I hope you are reminding everybody about that. It's important for people to know <laughs> that you said this before it happened and that people need to see. Everybody can be a bandwagoner now and see. But, yeah, for you to point that out early on is good on you. One of the hosts who I have gotten to know, love this guy, someone I'm sure you worked with with Big 12, was Ari Temkin. Mm. And I'm glad you he, said that name. I was yeah, okay. Here. I'm glad I did because I thought that you had an awesome – experience with him his work ethic ryan what made it so profound made it so extensive he's a beast yes <laughs> yes he's a beast seriously uh there's another guy in the big 12 um chris plank you know these guys are just anywhere you turn on a radio dial you'll hear their voice um i love it and they're fun and you just know right at the start of a show that they've been doing this for a long time and that they know what they're doing and that they can carry a show by themselves And Ari was just so good to me. Um, You know, it was my first real show as like I was the main producer. You know, we have an associate producer, you have a producer, and then you have the two hosts. That's pretty much how our shows are structured at Sirius XM. And I was the associate producer when I first got um, hired on when I was on NASCAR. And then when I moved to the college world, this is my first time, you know, booking guests and, you know, doing a whole bunch of other stuff that the producer is responsible for. And Ari just made it so easy for me. Um, You know, we're about, you know, he's only a few years older than me. And we just related on so many different things. And uh, I definitely miss working with him. He was great. And he's got a, just a, you know, a heck of a drive for this. He's always working all the time. He's a good, good husband, good dad, and uh, happy to call him a friend. No question about it. And he has a great drive. So do you. So from a perspective of sort of seeing what your day is like normally, how much of it is spent in show prep? How much is, is trying to wrangle guests And so like living in a single day in your life, typically, what does that look like from a a grassroots perspective? Well, it's changed a little bit. 
um, so when I was on Big 12, you know, it was not, we weren't getting as many calls and, you know, it was a lot of, you know, you want to get really in depth with the conference. Like, so, you know, if you're listening to Big 12, you're a big time Big 12 fan. Yeah. And so, you know, I would want to reach out. There's only 10 schools in the Big 12. So I want to separate my guests, you know, throughout the week. Like I'd get a West Virginia guy on, I get a Baylor guy on. And then the next day, Iowa State, Oklahoma, you know, so forth and so forth. But with ESPNU, it's so broad, you know, it's like everything. And we had so many weekly guests. And I always wanted to, on my old show, book like, you know, at least three guests just to make sure we were okay. But now on the new show, it's like Dusty and Danny just kind of vibe so well and they can talk about whatever. Sometimes we don't even need a guest, which is awesome. I love that. Um, and sometimes we'll just do one guest and we have, you know, a, a pretty solid group of regulars. And um, so the booking of guests has definitely changed over, you know, in the last few months. But in terms of show prep, um, I probably do, you know, I, I get to the studio usually an hour and a half before the show starts just to make sure everything's all set up. I got my rejoins. I got, you know, audio that the guys are ready to go. And then throughout the day, I'm obviously on Twitter and, um, you know, just trying to track down stories. And then at night I make my, my show map it usually takes, you know, an hour or so and um, send it over to the guys. I know there's some people, um, some producers that spend hours, you know, on their show notes and they'll do like a, you know, a 25 page show map. And I just think some people work a little too much. Like you got to make it easy for your hosts. Um, at least in my experience, you know, the not, I wouldn't say less is more, but just, you know, put it all in a nice little grid and just have some topic rundowns. It doesn't need to be, just make it look organized. Cause some of the, some of these other stuff I've seen can be a little, a little over the place. Oh yeah. No question. It can look manufactured. It can look contrived. Ryan Ballack is with us. I'm Brian Fenley. You, it's sort of like, you are giving them places to go and then they're driving the car. And as long as they know what highway to go on, you're going to be in, in great shape. And, and certainly your career is one in which you've gone along this highway. And, and, it, and you've got to be able to just on the fly. You yes. Know, it's like a lot of that now in radio is great, especially with the, you know, back being on ESPN, your radio, it's like, I'm back, you know, there's breaking news all the time. You know, there's always something new happening during the day. There's always a different piece of sound that they want during the show. You just got to be able to ready be ready to go. Just say yes and, you know, keep your head down and you can get it done before the commercial ends. <laughs> yeah. What does it look like when something huge happens and you have only a finite time to act on it? How do you work so quickly in that moment? It depends. You got to think what you want to do. You know, you got to think how much time you have left and how you want to approach the rest of the show. You know, if it's a big controversial story, then you want to get, you know, it's fun to get calls in like that. Or if it's a big, you know, unfortunately, sometimes, you know, death happens in our industry a lot obviously and it, those are uncomfortable conversations but those are better to have with somebody who actually knew the person as opposed to two people who don't relate to them at all and just have memories of watching them on television so every situation is definitely sensitive um and yeah you just got to be ready for anything i mean that's that's the big thing with sports radio anything can happen one thing that did happen for you and someone who you can relate to is west durham because he went to elon Yep. You went to Elon and I was listening to this interview you did a little while ago, Ryan, and you were talking about, was it a lunch conversation you had with Wes where he I brought you? Research. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I don't want to waste your time because, because first of all, I want you to know how much I appreciate your time. And I think you were with a, a couple classmates or some buddies of yours and you had this really inspiring lunch conversation with Wes, who people know is, is one of the stars in sports media in this country now. And, and, and does a lot of work in radio and television. How formative and how game-changing was that sit-down conversation with Wes and the role even to this day that he plays in being a guiding light for your career? Um, Wes was, is, is great. Wes is the man. Um, his brother, uh, Taylor, does the game still at Elon. And Wes, oh. I remember, came to school and, you know, told us, like, I didn't know Wes that well, you know, because he does, like, Atlanta Falcons radio. Um, and I, don't, I, I just ha wasn't as familiar. And then I got to know him, and he told me that he worked at WSOE 89.3 when he was younger. Wow. And it was just really, really cool. Like, I was the sports director at, at the radio station at the time, and I was like, oh, man, this is a... Uh, it's pretty cool. Little Elon producing these people. Um, and Elon, I could go on for days about how much I love that place. But, you know, it was great. He took us all, you know, me and my probably five of us out to lunch. And he was just he was just 
honest about everything and it wasn't it was pretty inspiring he's been uh he's been very nice not the one who i've you know i unfortunately haven't gotten the chance to really work with him as much over the over the years but you know i've had him on the show a few times and his as i said he works for he does the play-by-play for the falcons and his color commentator dave archer was my host on big 12 radio for the last three years with ari so then i got to know wes a little bit more and wes and arch would come on the show and they would you know that was hilarious conversation when we had the two of them but just a great guy and uh, i love that he reps elon i mean he he wore a t-shirt that i asked for my girlfriend for for christmas and she got it for me so what what was that t-shirt it was just like an old school, like 1980s. I think it was working when we won the national championship, which I don't believe actually happened. But yeah, we, <laughs> we won. Elon won some sort of national championship in football. So we'll take it. <laughs> and, and as small as this business is, I think one day, you know, you and Wes will connect again and, and perhaps work together, just given how this business can be so small. Ryan Ballack is with us. I'm Brian Fenley. Let's go lastly to your, your college days and, and being at Elon. And it's it has an incredible program there as far as preparing you for life after college in the world of media. Where do you feel like you grow, you grew the most in college to set yourself up maybe more so mentally for handling, as we talked about the grind that would ensue as your career unfolded. So my freshman year, so at Elon, we had three semesters. We had a spring term, um fall term and you had winter term winter term is only a month long and they had really awesome classes you know i took my four years there i took managing a professional sports franchise it's a class um (laughs) woodstock 60s hippies and other enduring legacies i went to australia for a month and then i took a sports media class so and i was just a business major so like i ate up all the winter term stuff obviously and my freshman year I took that management professional sports franchise class and I sat next to these two kids who ended up being on my radio show that I did in college. Um, still very good friends, Joe Dirianzo and Greg Brzezowski. Um, and they told me to come to this, this meeting, you know, cause I like talking sports with these guys and there's not growing up. I didn't really know that many people that really, you know, I'm a sports like encyclopedia or it felt like, you know, I'm sure you felt the same way growing up. Like there's just, you know, you have conversations with people about sports. It's like, you know, you're a fan, but like, mm, yeah, like, there's a lot more to this conversation than just, he made a nice catch or he's, you know, whatever. Russell Westbrook's a hall of famer. It's like, stop. And um, well, he is all a famer, but you know, yeah. he's not going to win the NBA championship. That's, regardless of the story i had to get a ridiculous take of course um but these guys took me to a meeting and i did this one-on-one sports thing and the second meeting i went to they were like all right you're gonna do the webcast which was like pretty much just going up and debating and just doing this thing and i was like "Mm -hmm, i'm not doing this i mean let me see how this works like before i really you know dive in and start doing it and i did it and i was good and I was so proud of myself oh. and I didn't really, you know, ever picture myself being on television. I get nervous, like, you know, sometimes in front of crowds. I mean, but I know I can entertain. Um, and I did it and it just kind of just kept going and going. I ended up going on the radio and, you know, just turned into a whole thing. And obviously it turned into my entire career, but Elon gave me those opportunities because at like a bigger school, I mean, I feel like you got to work on the school newspaper. I mean, I don't really know many school radio stations that just let any student go on there and just have an hour of their time and just do whatever kind of show they want, or just have their own television station for the students and let them do whatever show they want with a budget. And it was awesome. Um, You know, it was the best. These kids I'm still in fantasy football leagues with, you know, one produces for, um, Colin Coward, people produce for Monday Night Football, people produce for the Charlotte Hornets. It's just such an awesome group of people that I had never really met someone like myself before. And then I met like all of all of them. And I thought like there were no other people like this that really existed. And then I realized that Syracuse and Northwestern probably have like a thousand of them, considering that's <laughs> pretty much all of sports media. But uh, no, Elon's got it. We know we hold our own and uh, it was an awesome group of people and they're still holding it strong. The one-on-one sports, you know, kids all these years later. So it's awesome. I loved it. We did a live NFL draft show, like on NFL draft, we did a live show and uh, that we ended up, I think we won like a college sports Emmy for it um, the year before, but it's uh, it was, it was awesome. It was such a great experience and getting to work and do all the different sorts of things 
in sports media from running camera to being on the air to doing sports radio to running the board to directing you just got to do it all and all for real stuff and it was it was the best experience yeah what a what a springboard it sounds like and being able to play every different role in the business allowed you to to see what different opportunities out there because i think a lot of people don't realize how many different things you can do in this business but being at elon and seeing that and then also as i think about what you were just saying the confidence it gave you. So given that you had some experience in different things. And so with repetition comes, I think a lessening of nerves if you're on the air and so you do it. And so being able to provide that for you, that confidence booster certainly was what I think the jet fuel for what your career has turned into today and is going to turn into in the future. Ryan Ballack, senior producer, Sirius XM channel 84. Go check him out. Dusty and Danny in the morning, 7 to 10 a.m. Eastern weekdays on, of course, ESPNU. Ryan, this was a lot of fun, man. I appreciate you doing this. I'm Brian Fenley. No, I, I appreciate you doing this, and I appreciate what you're doing. It's cool, man. Like, I don't, you know, know necessarily all the people that you've been interviewing, but just going behind the scenes and, you know, talking to some of us who make, you know, help make the magic happen, um, I think it's really cool, and uh, I, I really appreciate it, and yeah. uh, good luck with everything.